So the circuit on the left in the presentation you see is just there to show you, to, to have some idea about the circuit that we are talking about. Um, and uh, the rest, the values, etc., are here on the, on the right. I must take the root, of course. So here you see I make the uh, A20 uh, Mac. Um, I, the, the, the other pole, I, I can say, uh, put the time constant to zero, but I put the frequency to one gigahertz, so it's not, uh, it's so far away, it has no influence. Uh, RF, 10 kilo ohm, CS, 300 PF, and no uh, compensation capacitance yet. Um, so I define all the parameters according to this uh, the, the tau two, which was here tau two in the in the presentation. I define it with a frequency and dividing it by two pi. So that's uh, that's the definition of tau. Um, and then we are going to run all the things. Uh, uh, first thing is I run the situation without any compensation. Second, then I calculate the bandwidth. Calculate automatically the uh, compensation uh, for the amplifier. And here you see the calculation of the phantom zero. And then I do the, um, uh, again, the plot, the Bode plots of the asymptotic gain models, but now of the compensated amplifiers. And then we are going to step the bandwidth up from the phantom zero limit to down to 10 kilohertz, I should say down instead of up, of course. So we, we step to F max equals 10 kilohertz, um, and we are stepping the uh, CF value, and we're plotting then the gain. That is what I do. I can, I can run it here. I did it already, and I better show you the results in the HTML file, because that is, uh, I think, better to read. Okay. So the circuit data again is like this. This was the circuit. Um, you see everything is uh, at the end uh, has numeric values, which means I can make plots. That's very important to, that's a check I always do because sometimes you forget to define some parameters and then you get error messages from your plot routine that it cannot plot symbolic values or other things. So that's why I always do element data and params to HTML, parameters to HTML, then I can read if everything is uh, defined in a numeric way. So the circuit, um, that is okay. And we are going to the asymptotic gain model plots that you see here. So 10 kilo ohm gain, you see the asymptotic gain is frequency independent. Uh, the uncompensated amplifier has a lot of peaking that was also predicted because the sum of the poles was much smaller than the square root of two times uh, the product, uh, the square root of the uh, product of the poles. Here you see the, the loop gain, the black one, exactly as predicted. It starts already with one pole in the origin, so you cannot see the one. It starts at minus 60 dB per uh, octave. And then there is a second pole at about 53 kilohertz um, that we calculated, and that's correct. And then we pass here at 410 kilohertz. The loop gain passes the zero dB line. There is the... Uh, bandwidth of the amplifier and that is where the servo function of course peaks and the gain shows the same peaking because it's the product of the asymptotic gain and the servo function that is why i like this figure so much you have everything together and you can explain very well what is happening there is no direct transfer so it's simply not plotted um then we have uh, <clears throat> the compensated amplifier, the compensation was automatically calculated. The calculation result was 50 PF. You can check it if you run the Python files yourself, but it's not that interesting. You see a nicely compensated MFM characteristic, and it is indeed, you see here, the loop gain, a zero around the band edge of the amplifier. That is how it works. So you see the, the, the loop gain now has a zero and that is a phantom zero exactly compensating for MFM. In the next step, we are going to limit the bandwidth. And here is the result. I'm stepping now the 
compensation capacitance from its value that it has for uh, MFM characteristics. So the upper red line is the MFM compensated characteristic. And now I'm making the capacitor step-by-step step larger, ending up at 1.6 nanofarad, which would give me together with 10 kilo ohm, uh, exactly 10 kilohertz bandwidth. And that's the lowest line, the, the green one. And you see two things. You see exactly the splitting of the poles as predicted, but you also see that the bandwidth reduces. The green line is not touching the red line, the first red line. But you see, in the beginning, not so much happens with the bandwidth, because then the compensation capacitance is still smaller than the source capacitance, and so we are not really uh, moving this second pole this 53 kilohertz pole. But if we are increasing the feedback capacitance CF, and then at the end, we will really uh, move the pole and then the bandwidth will be limited. And that's what you see here. Below you see the loop gain, the loop gain. And here, the red one, the lowest one, is with 50 PF. You see definitely the, 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 the pole and the zero around the bent edge of the amplifier. And exactly as we did with this simple picture in the slides, we see that with increasing capacitor, the servo function bandwidth increases, but it doesn't increase that much anymore, of course, if the if the, the capacitor is much larger than the source capacitance because it cannot do anything. We have already unit to gain feedback, you could say. So this is exactly as predicted. And um, it's nice also maybe to study the root locus of this, uh, of this um, thing that is happening here. You see, this is the uh, compensated amplifier, the poles for the case that the, the feedback capacitance equals the phantom zero capacitance. And then you see there are making a circle around this zero and they should be at 45 degrees, but because the bandwidth is a little bit reduced, um, we need to do some extra compensation to get them at 45 degrees. And that is not included because I did the automatic compensation. So the reason that they are not exactly under 45 degrees is that CF being 50 PF with a source capacitance of 300 PF, its effect cannot be ignored on the second pole. And now what happens if we make this feedback capacitance equal to this maximum capacitance, this 1.6 nanofarad? Well, you can, we cannot view here what is, what, what is happening here around 10 kilohertz. The scale here is like megahertz. You see this, the scale is 2.5 megahertz. This is the uh, non-dominant pole that moves away. So I have to zoom in around the origin here to see what is happening. And if we see the root locus, it has been predicted. And yes, if I zoom in around the origin, then you see that the pole that is there, called the, 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 the first pole and the second pole are moving towards each other. If I'm increasing the uh, loop gain, and now I have a large feedback capacitance, yeah? So this pole is at a lower frequency than 53 kilohertz, don't forget that. And this is setting the bandwidth of 10 kilohertz. So this pole and this pole, the two poles are moving towards each other, dress, uh, making a circle, describing a circle around the zero. One pole will move towards the zero, and you see it is not on top of the zero because the loop gain is not infinite. So there is, it will end there. And the other pole is really going to a higher frequency. We have seen it's really ending at uh, 2.6, 2 well, 7 uh, megahertz. And this one is, well, almost on top of the 10 kilohertz. So we could also make another plot. And this is a, uh, let's say, less conventional root locus plot. So this, this root locus plot, this, this, this circle, and the previous one, this one, are quite conventional root locus plots because we are, change, we are working with the root locus gain, A. That is the, the variable that we are plotting. And that's what everyone does in control theory. But for us, A is not a variable. 
if we, for example, put an op amp in there, then we have uh, a gain and we want to, uh, we are not going to change the gain. We're not going to destroy the properties of the op amp. No, we are going to, for example, uh, see what happens with the comp uh, as a function of the compensation capacity. So we want to have a root locus in which we place the, uh, in, uh, that shows the, the root locus as a function of the feedback capacitance. And it starts here, this, the cross, and it ends on the plus. So it starts almost in Butterworth position because the amplifier was compensated. And then the pole, one moves to the zero at 10 kilohertz, and the other one moves to infinity. So this is a way of plotting the root locus as a function of, you could say, a compensation capacitance. But in this case, of course, we would like to set the bandwidth with it. So that's an, another situation.